Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of the Strand Tennis Center podcast, filled with tips, advice, tennis, not tennis, just life advice too, whatever you need. Uh, like it on YouTube, share it on uh, the podcast as well. Thank you. Hello everybody, welcome to the Strand Tennis Center podcast. I am Steve Capo, I am your host, we are at the Strand uh, I look around and I see baskets and balls and rackets everywhere. We are in the mode of, and again, this podcast is getting more into the day-to-day life of a small business, what you do, what, how you run things, uh, obviously also a seasonal business, what you do at different times. So we're moving from spring into summer, and when we do that, we do some, some consultant gigs, we do some programs, so we'll need some Outdoor support will inquire and, and employ some more staff to work with uh, summer tennis kids. They'll come in and do a few sessions. And um, you kind of change your schedule in regards to a uh, kind of a tennis pro, an indoor facility, an indoor business, Santi. You will begin to look forward to the change. You were here for last year's summer camp, correct? Yes, Obviously. Yeah, yeah, that's when you started. Yep. Well, you started in April, right? Yep. Yes, yes. Once you start to get tired of a certain schedule, luckily it changes. So, and that's, and then usually you start your summer camp, and then by the time week 14 rolls around, you're like, I can't wait till we go back to the other schedule. It just happens. But you need that change, you need variety. That's why it's good for the employees to have different schedule. We change it up, it's not necessarily the same. Schedule every day because no matter what you do, if you like it, you like it. It gets repeated, repeated, repeated. It's really hard to uh, stay motivated and focused. So we start a different schedule. We have more kids during the day. Uh, we have a combination of more privates and a combination of more uh, later clinics because uh, they're still working people that want to play at night. So that change is nice. So we start to get prepared, and your schedule changes. And you have to uh, adapt to that kind of uh, change. For me, it's more of a selling two weeks. You start to let people know and educate the customer. And that's why you can never take for granted as a small business that they'll always show up. And I say that to everybody at this time because this uh, title of this podcast, you can say, uh, you can call it competing with free. Competing, How do you compete with free? with free? How do you compete yeah, with free? Courts, so that's, yeah. free. Because Outside. now we're in what? June. It's June. Weather's oh, yeah. Nice. Happy June. June happy Ju- happy yeah. June. Yeah. The weather's nice, yeah. or the weather will be nicer. And we're in a business where you could do this outside with your friends. For free. For free. So competing with free is something that... Where where do you think I'll, I'll ask you first? Where's the difference maker when you're competing with free? So it's not a price point you're competing with. Uh, it's more so they I would say they come in for like an experience with uh, if they like a certain coach or a certain person they're learning. I've been learning with. Um, also, sometimes people just want to enjoy the social aspect of it, and they miss coming and talking to us rather than and also the people that come and play here. So yeah, sure they can play outside. Um, you know, that's fine, and it's free, and it's great, but at the same time, they might, you know, they might miss the camaraderie that we have and the, the atmosphere that we have here, um, I feel. Like so that that is true. So you're looking to create a culture and environment that people feel better around and they feel connected to, so they want to come because it's not just hitting a ball, right? You're selling yeah. an experience, yeah. which is important. So... There's a twofold thing. You're competing with free, but you're also competing, and I'll, I'll be very, very specific with price point as well. Because, and this is where, as the owner, you have to be willing to say, okay, um, I want to. This is as where, as the owner, you're here to make sure your employees are busy in the summer because they work hard for you all winter, and you have to be willing to take less. For the business to last longer. So most lessons, say say somebody's working as an independent contractor inside a tennis club. Mm-hmm. And they'll work inside that tennis club and they'll have their lessons and they'll work. And what'll happen is 
once the weather gets nice, they're going to take their lesson outside because they'll get 100% of their lesson. Yeah, they have the record time. Correct. Yeah. So say the lesson is indoors 120 bucks. And the pro would make a lot less than they would make just going outside with that person. Usually it's like 80 bucks they'll charge the person outside. So it all goes to the pro. So you have to be willing as the owner to say, okay, we have a great lesson and our, pro, our pros are loyal, but between 70, 80 bucks to 120 is a big deal. It's going to make people go, why am I going to do this? Even though we like the pro and uh, he be, he'll be loyal to the club, they'll find somebody that can teach them outside. So as the owner, you have to be willing to say, and this is part of a small business, willing to take less to keep that customer here and keep that pro happy because that's going to create activity at the club and more things will happen and somebody will tell somebody to come and then they'll sign up for it. You know, you have to think long term. So what we do here, what do we do here, Santi, to uh, handle that price point issue? Oh, um, we'll give deals. Yeah. I so don't know. Is that so it? what I'll do is. Yeah, you give deals. And this is like, and Special. somebody just told me, I was sitting over dinner with someone who uh, is running a, a, a flight school and it's all about leadership. It's very, all these businesses are very the same. If you're doing hourly lessons or hourly, you know, f flight lessons or any kind of lesson, uh, Taekwondo, anything. If you go and tell the customer, look, uh, I know you want a deal, but uh, I, I, I'm going to have to cut the pro's hourly pay. The customer would be like, you're the biggest jerk ever. You're the <laughs> owner. You're not, you shouldn't cut the pros pay. So what we do here is we cut the lesson price to, I think it's 90 bucks from 120, but I don't cut your pay. Yeah. And I'm not a martyr, so but that's you, what you have to do. I cut, I, I cut the, the, the clubs yeah. cut because that's the only way to compete with somewhat of a price point and compete with free because free means that you're hitting with somebody else. Free doesn't mean that you're outside getting a lesson free. So we're competing with twofold. We're competing with free with people that just want to play. Yeah. So we'll do open time. We'll lose a lot of that. That'll be hard to get because it's yeah. just open time. You're selling a space. Yeah. But when you compete with the lesson price, if you're right there with it and they have the pro they want, it's going to be a no-brainer. right? So, yeah. But it's my job. It's the owner's job to say, okay, I'm going to take that cut so we can satisfy the customer keep more people here and you and you really if you do it right you make it up on volume that's the way, what it is more people will take more lessons because it's the same price point you're inside this air conditioning it's very comfortable they're like oh instead of once a week maybe i'll take it twice a week now because it's just yeah. as cheap and, yeah. it, and it's a nice environment and i'll tell four friends to do it so you have to be willing in different sessions to understand the customer, obviously understand what goes on, and be unselfish. And if you're not unselfish, number one, you're going to piss off all your pros, and they're not going to be loyal to you during the most important time when you need them to work a little harder in the winter and the fall because they know that you don't, you don't care. You're going to take every dollar out of it. So that's a big key. That's how you compete with free and compete with such a cost and a lesson because we're in a situation where we have it's like uh it's like uh you know going on a treadmill at lifetime or any other gym when it's 70 degrees out 75 that's why saying. they pay a membership but these uh these uh these modalities were you know they have just a, a jogging club right what's, what's the there's one of them exponential fitness has just a a treadmill, I think it's called, I forget what it's called, jog, I can't remember. It's just a treadmill gym. That's it. Right? You're That's all run. they do. So they create these communities. They have to because yeah. if you were just selling a modality of a bunch of treadmills and that's it, yeah. like there's just rowing. There's like City Row. You ever heard of City Row yeah, yeah. where they just row? Yeah, it's like uh, the Soul Cycles. They, all they do is. Correct. You know, it's a, uh, all modalities, right? But that's different because I guess because. Peloton obviously has a full program. Their interface is great. You can do it anywhere. Yeah. Soul Cycle, that's why they put those bikes outside the Hamptons. They'll put them outside mm -hmm. so they can experience that. But yeah, you're pe you're competing when you're doing a when you have a jogging gym. You're competing with a pair of shoes in the sun. Yeah. If you don't create a community, if you don't create, oh, thirty of us are going to run with this person. Yeah. At this place, 
Yeah. And that's why your, your, your leader, your coach is everything because they are representing a community that people will come to regardless of whether or son and I have always been a firm believer in bu the business shouldn't be seasonal if you're creating the right environment. People will just be like, well, this is where I go. This is my schedule, right? People get into habits. And if you get into those habits, you're like, it doesn't matter. It, 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 like, you know, we have a, a rock climbing gym as our uh, partner. Sure, they get a little slower, but people want to rock climb if they like an environment. You can rock climb yeah. outside. This is a much, it, it, you know, it could be a better environment. People enjoy it more. Yeah, I would say, like, Friday nights, that's the rock climbing night. All the all the young people come. and. Yeah. So it's together. more social, it's more right? Social, correct. You know. Yeah, because it's interesting. Rock climbing is a very isolated solo sport, right? So yeah. you're climbing with one other person. It's not but really you're still, like you're still in your own world. Cause you're in your you, world. You fall. That's you falling. Correct. Someone can help you climb for you. Yeah. yeah. Over yeah. there, it's it's a different kind of sport. It's not really. To me, what I see, it's much more of a community over there. It's packed, and there's people in there that are enjoying each other's company, it's more, less of a solo sport and more of a group kind of experience. Yeah. Tons of parties over there. It, they, they run a great business over there, and I really think it's, and that's distinctly two different things, and that's what you're trying to create tennis-wise, too. Two distinctly different things. You go play outside with somebody, very different than creating an experience in here, and everybody's trying to do that. You know, every business is trying to create an experience right they're all they would all say that uh, uh, between peloton between lifetime between uh, like we said city row between uh oh my god Bull img bulletaries all of it you're trying to create an experience but it's very hard to differentiate. You have to decide whether the technology is the leader or the experience is the leader because I was just listening to the, uh, the president of Tonal. You know who Tonal is, the, the home gym? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. They're basically saying they're an intelligent, it's intelligent fitness because you would never go to a gym it's like if a you had... a giant ha iPad. Yes. Like looking wall thing. And it has a like trainer, a but it has all, it's and basically strength yeah. training. Comes with like a little bench that folds out. I think it? so. It has a full training. You yeah, can have yeah. a trainer. It's all yeah. software. And yeah, yeah. but I don't know well. But the weight, the weight can change between negative. You can pull up at a certain weight, and it changes the weight in the negative a certain way down. And they're saying it's so it's such smart fitness that it's different than going to the gym or anywhere working out. So mm. it's like us creating some sort of smart tennis experience, teaching you a different way to play tennis. So it compares to nothing. It compares to you can't compare it to anything else because most mm. gyms or tennis clubs are going to say, "What are most tennis clubs going to say? We're going to improve your game. You're going to you're going to get fit, and then you're going to feel better as a person, and then you're going to be part of a community. Everyone wants to do that. But at least that's what I think. Um, so you have to really, really understand." what you're selling and how you're going to create a different type of experience besides that. Because everybody's going to say the same thing and everybody's going to promise the same thing. So, and again, we go back to technology and I think that's why uh, you know, having uh, smart courts or gamification courts are interesting too. But I think you're really selling, I think it's really human to human selling and that's the biggest important thing. So, in this day, in this time, in June, July, August, our summertime, you really, really have to test how solid a business is when it can be competed, when you, it, it, the competition can be something that's free or something that's super cost effective. So I always say when someone comes up to me in January and they say, you know, how's business? I was like, if I can't fill a, a tennis club in January, I should just leave yeah. because you just, 
That's just a supply and demand issue. And if you go out of business in the middle of the winter, it's a big problem. You know, you, yeah. you've got more problems than just... Not just the tenants. Yes. It must be you. And I always tell everybody that's the true test of a business is these months and whether you can be able to tell people the experience is still just as important here as it is outside, as it is... Uh, at, at a free club, at a free place to go play outside, or is it super cost-effective, cheap, less? So that's the real test at this point. And you have to, and I was saying it last year when I came, what well, last week when I came back from vacation, you really have to understand that and stay under control. And you have to say, okay, this is a different situation, and you navigate through it. And you say, okay, and this is where I test everybody. That's why when I, when I told you when I had the meeting with everybody saying, listen, this is where you understand and say, okay, it, it's a privilege for someone to walk in the door. It's not a right because we get so busy that we think, oh, it just always happens. And yeah. then you start to realize and go, okay, wait a minute. We're not unbelievable it's because, you know, we have a lot of things in our favor between October and May. And that's just and that's just humility. You have to realize that you can't get high on your own supply and go, no, we're the we're the greatest. We have a wait list. It's November and blah blah. You know, I always say that and I'll call <laughs> I'll talk to Chris or I'll talk to somebody in June and go, Do we have a wait list? And then you know, the the hesitation and stuff like that. But that's really the test of being always humble and say, Listen, I know it feels incredible in December, but in June, you're going to have to hustle and realize that that's the test of how good you are in those three months. So I'll be testing you these three months, Santi. Okay. June, July, and August, and <laughs> see. Hey, look, look at Santi. <laughs> Santi's like, I, can I, I can't wait to go to my vacation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how many days are you going away in June, July? It's a week. Nice. A week. I, well, that's... I don't want to do more than a week because I don't think we're allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> you need me back. Well, you know, CJ, you, you, well, yeah, CJ's yeah, been so gone for whatever. Yeah. That'll never happen again. It's no good. one goes on vacation. No, I'm no just more kidding. vacations. No more vacations. Everybody's stuck no here. Sleeps at the Strand. Wake yeah, up yeah. Well, you know, I told <laughs> there was a client one time who thought I slept here. There was somebody who was just like, I mean, thought nice I had a room upstairs. It was just yeah. so silly. That'd be but, cool. I would live here. <laughs> you build me a little fort, I would live here. Yeah. Something you're the best. Did you find a place to live yet? No, no, no. Why didn't you pull the trigger on no, that place? You I'm sp now. I'm, now I'm going on vacation. Now I have no money. So. See, here <laughs> we go. You should we start talking finances <laughs> no. and money again and maybe, go through maybe this? Maybe the next podcast we'll talk you, about how to be financially stable. Oh, Santi, Santi, you're grow. killing me, buddy. Yeah, you're the best. I'm, I've been. I mean, I've been browsing, but then I then I found that good plane ticket, and I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna. Because the plane oh, here, the plane ticket was eleven hundred, and now it was seven sixty. That's a big difference. What do you mean? It just changed? You were looking? Yeah, you know, like it changes every yeah. few days. Yeah. It's I've, same, pl same, same flight? Same flight, direct flight, yeah. Hawaii, right? Hawaii. Wow. That, uh, yeah. what, my boy, it's amazing. It's what do they say, difference. Wednesdays or Tuesdays yeah, is the best day? Yeah, you're supposed to like look online a certain day. Tuesdays I was looking at 1 a.m. On, like on like a Sunday or Saturday, mm -hmm. and then it changed back to, you know, like 7, 760. I was like, oh, direct flight. We should Correct. do those like life hack things like yeah. that. When's the best way to get a flight? Yeah. When's this? When's that? The bad? What time do you leave for in this commute or whatever it is? Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm not moving out yet. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> well, listen, that'll be where. You, what islands are you gonna go to? Do you know? Uh, Oahu. Just the normal one where everyone is. Uh, just eat a bunch of food, surf. Play golf, bring and you're just going course. yourself. Yeah, that's un. I, that's yeah. it's pretty cool. I, I like doing stuff by myself. That's pretty cool. I find somebody, you know. <laughs> oh, you'll find somebody. Or, or if anyone listening wants to come with, me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody listening wants to come with Santi to Hawaii, who will yeah. you, you pay for their ticket? No, uh, no, if, you got it. Uh, if I think they're cute. If I, <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, so play. funny. That's so funny. If I think you're cute and we hit it off, I'll pay for the ticket. Yeah, that's funny. Oh boy, oh boy. So uh, <laughs> so uh, it's basically just understanding what you're competing with uh, as a small business and understanding humility and going, okay, uh, I think basically this podcast, again, this is kind of like getting more into just weekly and daily, you know, because well, all I did all week was figure out 
what people need and where they should go and what they need over the summer and where the best best avenues for them to go. You have to figure out and navigate all that stuff um, and understand what they need in, a, in, a, in the schedule that changes for them, right? So it's the summertime. So things change, right? Kids are out of school and they need different schedules and you have to understand all this. You always have to be, it's a living, breathing thing. Once you start to lose... Uh, empathy for the customer and understanding what's going on, then you start to you just start to lose your business. You have to get it. Uh, so you know that's basically understanding what you're competing with, understanding, realizing that most companies in the fitness world or in the, in the tennis world or the teaching world are trying to kind of sell the same thing, and you have to understand how to di- di- dif- differentiate. I said it yourself from other people. You can't just because most companies will think they're, you know, changing the world and, you know, doing this for changing experience, making them happy. They become successful and they'll want to conquer the world. But you have to really look at yourself and say, are we really doing this? Are we really accomplishing that? And that's what, and then it goes back to making these seasonal changes a lot easier. Because if you are really creating a brand, and this is just, you know, talking about seasonal, it just prepares you for online stuff. If you really become a brand, like we said, where everything's going to go to voice and they're going to you're going to ask for hamburger and it, you know, if Five Guys is the brand, they're the brand. You have to establish a brand seasonally and online because if you don't, people are going to be like, "Okay, I'm just going to play anywhere." They want you have to realize that if you don't create a connection or create a brand, you're going to get you're going to get lost. You'll get lost in the shuffle and it'll be over for you. So you have to keep on working on that. Anything, son? No. No. <laughs> no. So uh, Hawaii guests, anybody, Santi will... Uh, yeah, I'll pay for you. Put in the comments, he'll pay for you. Look at you already yeah. put it in there, I'll pay for you. Hey, I'll go, I'll go, Santi. Uh, um, you're cute, I'll take you. <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny. I think the wife will be upset. Uh, so that's it. Hopefully you guys had a good Labor Day weekend. And, uh, well, I came back. I, I already did that podcast. Didn't we do that... When I came back, right? It was after. No, like, no it wasn't. No, it was before, before Labor Day. So. Yeah, hopefully Labor Day. You know, I, actually, I told you, I went on my trip. My mm-hmm. best day was Labor Day when I was off and I was at home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that was You're the nice. best. I could just nice. chill. I'm a yeah. staycation guy. I like that. I like, I realize just coming home, having nothing to do. Decompress. Decompress, read a little bit, work out a little bit, kind of walk out on the deck and chill. Like, those are the best times. Because, again, we have another employee that's coming back from Europe and he's, Flight was canceled. He's stuck in the air. Like, getting back, you need to decompress for four days after you get back. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to need it after a while. You're going to be like, Steve, I need a couple of days. I'm coming back in the morning, and I'm working. I'm planning on working in the afternoon. Well, just like I did, right? <laughs> yeah. Look so at you. I would land at like 7 a.m., and then I'll, I'm like, oh, I You're taking probably- like a red eye? I no, because so. of what is it? Well, six hours. It's, a, it's, it's a six, six hours different. Yeah, six hours back. So, so yeah. Yeah. I you can take a 7 a.m., and you'll be back by. Yeah. What is it? Ten hour flight? Well, I'm leaving. I don't know. I think three p.m. over there, and then oh, I don't know. And then over here would be like nine p.m. Yep. So then, ten hours later would be like nine a.m. Yep. Yeah. You're gonna lose ten. You'll be tired. It's all right. I'm gonna be fine. You sleep on the plane. Hopefully. 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 All right, everybody. Uh, share the podcast. Hopefully, this helps. Hopes provides some value and uh, stay active out there. Sunday. 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 <laughs> stay active. Keep busy. Keep moving. See. Ya. Hey, everybody. Hope you like the podcast. Please share with your friends, anybody that you know, anybody that's into tennis, anybody that's into bettering themselves, share it.